Hello again, I am Blunty, and this is the Intel Core i9-9900K. It churns along at 3.6 GHz, but turbo is up to 5 GHz. It is an 8-core, 16-thread, overclockable CPU with a 95-watt TDP. It also marks Intel's move to using solder as a thermal interface material, which has been on a lot of tech nerds want list for quite some time now, because it's a lot more efficient than the old way Intel did that. So temperatures are going to be easier to control and overclocking is going to be more efficient. Now, there's already a lot of videos and reviews and tests out there using this CPU. People are very excited about it for some very good reasons. But I'm going to drill down on a very specific use case, one I myself need several times a week and one of the kinds of use cases Intel actually market this towards. So I'm staying away from the artificial benchmarks and the sort of laboratory style tests and just showing some real world use cases. That being a megatasking monster, that is, multitasking several demanding loads simultaneously, like running a AAA game while live streaming, while also encoding another video in the background so it's ready for upload to YouTube or wherever. So people like me, content creators and streamers, can get more done faster and without having the system choke up on one heavy task at a time. But first, let's bounce across the test build a bit so you can see what we're working with. If you want to skip straight to the tests themselves, there's a timecode on screen. So I'm slamming the i9-9900K into a Republic of Gamers Maximus Eleven Extreme motherboard. First time I've used an Asus motherboard in a long while, actually. And man, they've got some lovely making life easy stuff in their designs. I've been missing out. It's not just fancy marketing and clever brand messages that implies a gaming tribe or public as it were. It's actually a really nice motherboard and I really liked working with it. For mass storage, I was testing a Seagate Barracuda Pro 14 terabyte drive. Ooh. <laughs> as a video guy, this makes me very excited, 14 terabytes, because I gobble up space like you wouldn't believe. I've got a smaller Barracuda Pro in my personal rig already, and I'm telling you right now, once this build is broken back down and I've sent Intel back their review chip, this drive is the new heart of my game capture. There's so much room on it. It's fast, it's quiet, and has more space than the skull cavity of your average... Oh, I don't know. Name a type of person. Politicians or something, I suppose. Man, it's hard to make a snarky joke these days without worrying about a mob of forever victims getting all offended at you. I miss jokes. <laughs> Sorry, got sidetracked there for a second. For the system install and for games that benefit most from super fast drives, I'm also testing the new HyperX Fury RGB. As many of you will know, I've been using HyperX SSDs for years now. They have been utterly flawless for me. No problems at all. No fails. No performance issues. I love them. This new beastie, though, which I have here in the 480 gigabyte form, but you can also get it in 240 and 960 gigabyte capacities, is more or less the same zippy joy as you get on the regular HyperX high performance SSDs. Only, if you like building showy rigs, as I do, this one also has a very cool, kind of aggressive looking external design. And, of course, as the name implies, RGB, which plugs into the now pretty common 4-pin RGB standard you'll find on most motherboards and other RGB accessories so you can control it right from software itself. And finally, to cool the 9900K, ASUS let me borrow one of the new ROG Ryujin 240 all-in-one coolers. Hope I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> this thing has a few extra tricks and bells and whistles and fancy stuff over the garden variety all-in-ones that are really common these days. Firstly, the contact plate and pump assembly head unit thingy also has RGB and an OLED screen, which I've just got showing the standard brand animation here that comes by default, but you can also use this to display your own custom logo, even an animated GIF if you like, or you can use it to show system monitoring functions, temperatures and such. The motherboard I'm using already gives me system temp, so I just let the logo stay. But on the more functional side of things, the more useful side of things, there's a fan built into the pump head, which is unusual. This makes sure there's proper airflow through the components surrounding the CPU, most vitally those that look after the CPU's own power supply. And for the radiator, they are even using the highly regarded and well-known to be extremely quiet Noctua fans. We'll come back to how the temperatures fare under load in a little bit, but suffice to say, I'm very impressed by this thing. There's also a trusty GTX 1070 from Galax in there. Now, 
For years, folks who stream PC games as more than a mere hobby have very often resorted to using two separate PCs, one for the game, one for running the stream. It's a lot more expensive, it's a lot more power, there's a lot more cables and complexity and a lot more room taken up, but it was the best way to make sure the game's needs didn't cripple the streaming needs and encoding quality or vice versa. So your stream didn't hurt your gameplay. Both gaming and encoding good quality streaming video are CPU hungry tasks, and previous generations of CPUs often struggled with doing both at the same time. Or at least doing both at the same time well. But now we are striding happily into the era of CPUs with larger core counts and designs more heavily focused on multi-threading. So now it is practical and easier and less expensive than ever to build one system that can cope with multiple simultaneous hungry workloads. To test this workload, I did several tests with several games, but I'm going to show you two here as kind of representative examples. The first is an eSports game, of course, Overwatch, whose gameplay needs high responsiveness, frame times, and low latency maintained so it can be as competitive as possible. The other side of the coin is a game that really just needs to sit at 60 FPS or so, and is more visually complex, is more CPU hungry, and, as it's Bethesda's brand new Fallout 76, it's much less finely optimized. That's a kind way of putting it. Frankly, it's a bit of a pig. And because of the finer detail and the more subtle colours and all that kind of stuff, it is more difficult to cleanly encode this than it is Overwatch with its big, bold blocks of bright colour. Now, the first tests were just running the game at 1080p in a window on a 1440p desktop while encoding an OBS at the maximum bitrate for Twitch, 6,000 kilobits per second, at 1080p and 60 frames per second for a smooth, high-res stream encode. Usually, of course, a streamer would have two, perhaps even three screens so they can full screen the game and also have OBS and chat off to the side and whatever else so it's nice and glanceable. But for the sake of making it easy to show you the workloads all running and to even make the rig work harder, I've done it all here on a single screen as a windowed game often drags performance down extra. For the secondary test, to push the limits even further, I repeated the same tests, but with the additional load of Handbrake re-encoding some high bitrate gameplay recording in the background to a more upload-friendly bitrate. So, first, Overwatch. Frankly, it did the first test on its ear, so I'm jumping right into the more difficult test, the mega workload, if you like. The game, the stream, and the handbrake encode all working simultaneously. And as you can see, even though at this point we're maxing out all threads on the CPU, everything is still running without a hitch. The game, on ultra settings by the way, is deep, deep into the triple digit frame rates, only very rarely even dropping below 200 frames per second, usually keeping much deeper into the 220 to 280 frames per second for that sweet, sweet responsiveness and slick feel that Overwatch really benefits from. Meanwhile, OBS is keeping a rock-solid 60 FPS encode and is looking nice and clean, which I can show you here because this is the very recording from that very same test. Of course, it's being re-encoded by my YouTube upload here, but uh, it should serve the point. Meanwhile, while all that was going on, Handbrake, albeit set to a lower priority so it didn't get greedy and hog the CPU, was still encoding at 1080p 30 frames per second video at better than real time, averaging around 70 frames per second encoding. So yeah, that's what Intel's new 9900K can do. Feeling impressed yet? Because I was. But over to the hungrier, clumsier Fallout 76 test now. Game and stream together doesn't even make the 9900K sweat. The game is running basically pegged at 60 FPS. There are some small dips here and there to the high 50s, but that sits outside of what the CPU is doing. As we can clearly see from the thread usage graphs off to the side there, none of them are even thinking about maxing out. This is just, you know, a Bethesda game being a Bethesda game. <laughs> but yeah, I'd expected Fallout 76 to put up more of a fight, or to at least make OBS choke up a bit in the fight for CPU time, but the i9-9900K just has a big old bucket of headroom to handle this workload flawlessly, which is awesome and a little bit surprising. Now finally, the big boy test. Fallout 76 and OBS and Handbrake all hungrily snatching for those CPU cycles. This is where I had expected to hit the limits of the i9-9900K. I expected a few hitches. I expected it to do okay, but I expected a few hitches. I mean, I've done this same kind of test on more heavily threaded CPUs before, and it does start skipping along the ragged edge of what is practical. It can make some games feel a little bit less responsive than they should be, for example. But here, due in large part to Intel's strong IPC performance, I suspect, that's instructions per cycle to you and me, it's actually swallowing it up whole and without making the game feel laggy even slightly. 
The game is still glued at or barely under 60 frames per second. OBS is still churning out a clean, smooth, hitch-free, every frame intact 60 frames per second 1080p video. And although Handbrake has slowed down slightly to an average of about 50 or so frames per second encode, that is still, by the way, faster than real-time encoding because I'm asking it for a 1080p 30 frames per second video file. We are at this point nailed to 100% on all threads of course, but nothing is choking. Everything still has what it needs to get the job done smoothly and perfectly, and, and all that while the cores are still auto-boosting and running above their floor clock. At 3.96 gigs, we're well clear of the 3.6 gigahertz stock clock. Which brings me back to the cooler. All this, and I'm still barely above 60 degrees, by the way. In a warm Sydney late spring day. That seemed crazy to me, so I installed Prime 95, I kicked the ever-living chocolate crispies out of the 9900K for one full hour of CPU murdering test, and I still got 60 degree temps. So yeah, that's pretty friggin' impressive. Intel's new solder interface and that fancy pants bells and missiles ROG cooler are just kind of god mode for chill factor here. I literally could not get whatever I did, this CPU, to touch even 70 degrees, which is still a three hour car ride away from any kind of thermal limit that would have it slowing itself down. It's crazy. So yeah, if you are thinking if an i9-9900K, there's so many nines, i9-9900K is worth investing in as a content creator and or streamer, the answer is a big fat capital Y, yep. And just to be clear about all this, by the way, yes, Intel recently sponsored my trip to PAX Australia, super fun, by the way, this video, this review, and this sample product, which I have to return, by the way, is in no way part of that. This isn't a sponsored video. I am under no contractual or financial obligation to Intel as I make this video. I just wanted to be extra clear about that because it was kind of time close to that other sponsored content, so people might have asked the question. And anyway, I showed you the results for yourself. There was nothing hidden here. There are no tricks. You can see the numbers ticking away for yourself. You can see it doing the workload that I say it can do. The numbers are there for you, and the numbers are good. This thing really is a monster that does to this kind of heavy multitasking workload kind of exactly what Intel promised it would. So thanks for watching. I am Blunty. I will catch you next time. And by the way, thanks again to Asus for lending me their sweet new Ryujin cooler, Seagate for the Monster Pro level mass storage. <laughs> Love that. And to HyperX for the shiny new, literally shiny new RGB SSD. Both of the latter two, I think I will be moving to my own personal rig now because oh my days, yes please. <laughs>